Now, back inside of the engine room. Regarding the tank. Once again, if you don't understand my accent, if you don't understand what I'm saying, don't watch the video. Fine, fine. Original tank. Original tank on the return here. The diameter. Seven and a half. I'm gonna call it eight millimeters. Fine, eight millimeters. The return. On this one. Eight and a half. I'm gonna call it. Fine. So there is no restriction here. Now, on these small holes, each of these holes, these five holes, it's five millimeter. All right, five or five. Okay, five millimeters. The diameter, the inner diameter of each hole. Fine. Five holes, twenty-five millimeters. Fine, fine. The feed for the I was willing to say now for the turbo charger. Uh -huh. Okay, the feed for the power steering pump, the original one, is thirteen point five. Fine. This one, it's fifteen. There is no restriction, no problem to feed the power steering pump. Correct? Okay. This need to be modified. This pipe and just make it like this. I don't want to have a leap on the flow. If it has a leap the other way, it's fine. That means if it comes like this and it, the fluid it comes this way, I'm okay. If the fluid comes this way, I have a problem because this leap is going to be against the flow. All right, we're going to make a leap inside. That's what I'm talking about. We're not going to do it like this. We're going to do it the other way around. Fine. Then this pipe. It's not going to enter here. It's going to enter this pipe here. All right. I'm just saying that you see that this. Wait. This pipe is going to end up like that, and going to be welded from inside. While we're going to end, we're going to weld it from inside. I don't want to create any cavities while they're welding outside, and to have a problem and to to be nice and equal, to be round. All right. I don't want to close the pipe. Same thing with the other pipe. Later you're gonna see the final product. <laughs> okay, the return is gonna end up here. Alright, that's if you see the inner diameter. And no either way around where I make like this shit. Alright, it's gonna come like that here. Fine. And at the end when they will gonna weld it, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna get this drill bit and I'm gonna pass it to be nice and smooth. To don't have any small bolts, let us say, from the Weld. Fine. Finish with the return. Finish with the feed. Finish with the stock tank. Forget it. Keep it there. Now, uh, before I go there, there was this spacer behind of this. And when you are opening the bolt, what's happening? This spacer fell down. We're gonna change that. We're gonna put the bolt, the spacer. We're gonna weld it on it. All right. To come together with the tank. So whenever somebody wants to remove it. So don't looking for the spacer. You can easily uh, lose it, all right? Or you can maybe you don't pay attention. It might fall down, and you're never gonna see that again. So you're gonna be welded here to be attached, to be everybody happy. Fine. It, no need to be precise. It's okay that it's moving a bit up and down. You see, from here it's passing M6 bolt, and the end diameter of this is 8.3, 8 millimeters. All right. So again, it's fine. There is no problem. For alignment purpose, it will gonna be welcome. Then, then, coming to the point, this bracket here, what you see, it comes here, like that. It's gonna end up to be here. The return is gonna be at this point. As it comes the flow, the pressure, it's gonna hit on this plate, and then some of the flow is gonna escape from up. It's not gonna be fully welded, or it might be fully welded, and it's gonna leave only this side open because. I don't want to modify the front cover. Um, how I can do it? I can cut one piece, let us say, here, and then weld it here, and then weld it again external. I don't want to do that. So, plan B. Uh, down here, I'm not going to be welded. I don't care. Here, this area, I they might weld it a little bit here, this area, and this area here. Just I want to stay in place, this bracket. I want to break the flow and the pressure that has. I need to hit the wall there, and then it's gonna escape left and right without causing turbulence on the rest of the tank. It's gonna be lower than the air, than the level. If the level, let us say, it's here, you see that the return 
it's gonna be lower. Fine, it's gonna be inside of the fluid, so it's not gonna make it's not gonna make bubbles. Fine. Once again, I have done this before. It's not the first time. I have made exactly the same modification in different tank a couple of years back. Not once. All right. At the end, when we see that everything is fine, that it looks nice and does have any piece, let us say, from the weld or something that we clean all the way around. At the end, we're going to put the cover here, all right, and the welders, they're going to weld it for me all around. Then I'm going to clean it once again, and I'm going to go to paint it, first primer, then sanding it, then paint, then make it two coats, leave it to cure, and then install it on the car to be nice and to don't have again to, me to mess with these stupid things. Now, there are different types of tanks. The, what's the thing? The thing is to don't create bubbles inside. To don't make a, to don't dis disturb the fluid in a in so high position like this one to start creating bubbles. You don't want that because the bubbles you're gonna be sucked from the pump. You're gonna have a sound. You're gonna overheat the fluid, and when you switch off the engine, you're gonna start escaping from here up. If you're asking me, it's the design of the tank. All right. If it was a bigger tank, let us say, and the return it was here. The feed was here, let us say, and this was another 30 centimeters, one foot, let us say, higher. We're not gonna talk right now. You're not gonna have to do nothing, all right? Or if, let us say, if I put the return from this side, and the feed is gonna be from this side, we're not gonna talk right now. I'm not gonna have even to open it because of the position and because of the volume, the height. That's why you have to do what I'm doing right now if you want to solve this problem. Now. Some pumps, it might be, let us say, in some cases, some other, they have it here. They have the return here and the feed, they have it down. Feed here, return here, all right? Some cars are not complaining. Some power steering pumps, are, they don't complain. It's working fine. Some other, it happened to me before, they make sound. And when you make a partition like this inside, you don't have any problem. It's not something that it might work, it might not work. I have already done that. Fine, so don't make my balls like a planet. Thank you. Moving on. Well, you're going to see how it looks like at the end. And you're going to hear it also on the car after the test drive. It makes sound or something. You're going to see that. Okay. Space has been welded. The return, it's been welded. All right. The bracket, it's been welded. Fine. This is how it looks like. Obviously, you can escape fluid from this side. You can escape fluid from that side down here, here, and here. So there's no restriction on the return just need to break the flow, the pressure, let us say, to don't have a turbulence, all right, especially here where it's sagging, you're going to be inside of the fluid, like I said, the return. Now, for those people that they're saying, oh, you know what, sometimes there is an air inside the steering rack, some other times there is an air inside the power steering pump. Um, see, it depends what power steering pump you have, the hydraulic pump, it's pushing between 50 and 70 liters per minute, let us say 60 liters per minute, all right. One liter per second. Fine. If let us say the hydraulic uh, system has two liters in total, example, with the cooler, with the tank, with the pump, with the steering rack, let us say it has two liters. I doubt it does have even two liters, but anyhow, let us say two liters. That means need two seconds to make one cycle of the fluid. Fine. So you can create air bubbles from the tank. The, it's it's simple, I think, because if you put the fluid inside, all right, even if it's completely empty, you start the car, you're gonna see some bubbles, obviously, because all the system is empty. If you leave it, if you turn it off, leave it to relax, to come all the bubbles out, and then you top up the fluid properly, that's what I'm doing on the Mercedes all the time, that means you, f you put it and then you're going after half hour, you switch off the engine, let us say, you start it for a couple of minutes, you switch off the engine, then you go after half hour, let us say, then you see the fluid inside does have bubbles, you top up the fluid, you fix the level, let us say, on the minimum first, you start again, and then you don't see again bubbles, all right? You're going to create air from the return. That's my opinion. This doesn't mean that I'm right, all right? Since what I'm doing, it's working, I don't care. Let's place it like that. Since I don't have a pump that's screaming, since the power steering is working fine, it's not over, overheating the fluid or something, I'm happy. And that's the point. All right? Now, uh, they will gonna co uh, continue with me. Uh, they will gonna continue 
to fix for me the correct dimensions here to be okay and make the final things before we cover it we're gonna take care about the details to don't have anything to stick any piece of aluminium anywhere inside we don't want to have aluminium floating flowing inside of the system all right and at the end we're gonna take care to looks nice and here we have the tank waiting to cure it's already been cooked just waiting to don't be it's a little bit sticky if you touch it, it it's still slightly wet that this wet takes time now. waiting to to cure the color dang it all right now it's been installed back on the car all right the level it's right there if you put this stick inside it's in the middle between the 20 degrees mark not maximum not minimum it's a 20 degrees mark this i have to check it again when it comes to operation temperature because like i said this is too much narrow all right mr derrick start the car now what do you see here inside there is no turbulence, there is no waves, there is no bubbles. Before, when it was here up, it was pushing so much and you see so many bubbles. Not now, not anymore. It went a little bit down, that's normal. That's okay, obviously. Uh, what's gonna happen? When they finish with the exhaust, turn it off, Derek. Because again, they make some alignments on the exhaust, all right? When they finish with the exhaust, and we're okay, starting it, leave it to warm up, see the, the temperature, how much uh, it's raising, let's say 80, 90 degrees, how much it's gonna be, and then double check again the fluid to, don't be, to be minimum, to be minimum for the 80 degrees mark. All right, again, the feed, it's at the bottom, it's full down. It's not small, the tank, on the height, like this is the original one. So we're gonna have enough fluid, the pump. You're not gonna have starvation from this point of view. That's the solution. You're gonna see that, not today, tomorrow, most probably, when we're gonna finish with the, uh, with the exhaust, fine. So tomorrow, that I'm gonna fix the level, I'm gonna make another video. We can have also test drive to make sure that everything is fine. Done, done. Thank you very much. Have a good night.